All right, guys, welcome back to another Stock Talk. Today is June 13th at 4.14 p.m. Eastern Time. We're looking at a chart that's the SPY or the SPY that tracks the S&P 500 on the 180-day chart using the Thinkorswim platform. Today was a very crucial day for several reasons. One, we're approaching the resistance, as you can see, denoted by this light blue line at $280. We talked about this yesterday. Second, we knew that the um, FOMC meeting minutes were going to come out at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which may further put a jolt in the markets. So given our extensive climb, it was interesting to see where we would be before the possibility of coming down uh, from at least the 280 mark. So let's take a look at SPY. We know that there is a strong resistance at 280, and we talked about this in previous videos. This resistance is actually stronger than the previous resistance, which is uh, now the semi-support at 278. You can see that it didn't really function as support, but in this case, this was the previous resistance, which didn't really function as too big of a resistance, but this one, in fact, is. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the one-year chart. The one-year chart shows that the 280 has been a previous resistance back here, as well as the gap down area when we first started this bearish downtrend. So it is reasonable to assume why this is a strong resistance. So I know what you guys are all waiting for. Um, you guys are going to think, well, am I completely right about everything that I said? Well, I mean, that's up to you for you to decide, but uh, you know, we talked about this in previous videos in such that look where we are right now, right? We have a bull flag pattern, sure, but we were nearing the top. We talked about how this was over a 4% climb, and at the same time, we talked about how we were nearing 4% here. We're actually, you know, right here, nearing 4%. And because we're near the long term resistance, we can expect resistance and the markets could temporarily correct itself. So how did I talk about playing the markets right now, yesterday, the day before yesterday? It is time to take positions out of, your, out of the market. Um, you can imagine how we're nearing the 280. We don't need to keep it. Where can we correct to? Well, one, right now, this is the 20 EMA line, right? Right here. And now it's finally beginning to slant downwards. So today was a fantastic day to release out of your positions, especially the first four hours, because that was before the meeting minutes came out. Secondly, if you didn't get out today, I think you still have time, but this is what I'm looking for in the near future, right? We know we're going to now extend a couple of lines to the right. So we are going to extend this line the uh, this line right here 274 line to the right okay why am I extending this to the right because I don't believe that 278 is gonna function as a support because this gap is too little 278 to 280 where can we find the next support well the next support could be around 274.30 let's take a look at the one-year chart and see if we can find anything different okay so where could we find support? Because we are in a bullish state, right guys? We're in a bullish state. We can reasonably find support around this area right here. And this area is 274 to 275.61. So you might be like, Kevin, why are you giving me such a big range? Can't you just give me one number? The reason why this is a bigger range is because you can imagine this is a pretty low support, and we can fall towards the which line? The orange line, the 150 SMA, which has functioned as a previous support, it can fall down here. So, you know, ironically or not ironically, this converges with the support area. The 150 SMA will be curving higher, the support will obviously stay put, and it should we start falling, you can imagine where we can start taking those positions into the market. So um, one way we could have played this market today is going into volatility, and we talked about that yesterday. The other way we can play the market, which is the more um, safer way in my opinion, is wait for the markets to go come down, and it looks like it's on the path of a potential reversal. Obviously, it can obviously recapture this area tomorrow and retest 
the 279 uh, to 280 area but at the same time just note that you know we're starting to kind of curve a little lower and should we start curving lower especially in this grade area we need to start thinking about taking positions back into the market because we're on a bullish reversal run right we've crossed over the lower high the red line we're on definitely on a uptrend it's just a slight correction Okay, so um, I want to show you guys intraday what happened on the uh, SPY. So this is what happened on the SPY. We know that 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is pretty much right around here, the meeting minutes came out, gave everyone a scare, right, as we you know, pretty much expected at this point. And then we had a massive recovery back up. This was followed by a rejection pretty much at the where? At the previous support area or the resistance area. You can see that it functioned as resistance here and now it functioned as an intraday resistance here. Very, very close. And then once we got rejected, we're coming back down. So just note that, you know, the candle now has fully formed, today's candle. And uh, looking at the one year chart, you see something, you know, that we haven't seen in a while. What is that? Two red candles next to each other. So um, you know, just be a little cautious as we are moving forward. If you haven't taken out of your position right now, here's another thing that I'm thinking about, right? If you're not out of your positions right now, those positions that follow the markets, um, you might have another chance tomorrow, whether pre-market or during trading. In my opinion, and this is just the theoretical, uh, what, what might happen is the markets will obviously come down, I think, if it does come down tomorrow. It will come down, but there's a potential for it to spike above the 20 EMA just a bit, just a bit 20 EMA. It might go to the 20 EMA or spike above the 20 EMA and then get rejected and continue on its lower trajectory. So um, that is a potential way you can exit. So um, it, once it starts spiking, whether this is the first 30 minutes, first two hours, whatever it is, um, you just you know want to look out for that. So uh, let's take a look at TVIX or volatility. Um, this is one play that you could have gotten yourself into and we talked about this how as by near the 280 mark we were looking at the area of potential reversal um, downwards for spy because we are so um, you know high up looking at the one minute chart here's what we see right pretty much inverse of spy as the markets were pulling lower uh, volatility or TVIX was pulling higher so you might have asked where could I have taken the position well the position would be pretty much in the beginning of the day, right? We talked about how um, there's going to be volatility swings, at least, with FOMC. So uh, if you didn't take that position, you can certainly take it where? Back over here, back on the uptrend. When it was climbing back up, you knew that you could have at least sold from here to here. This is very safe, right? This is the safe area. So what percent? it's not a huge percentage point. From here to here, this is only one and a half percentage point. But at the same time, I kind of reminded you guys that for volatility in a bullish market, you know, even if tomorrow markets fell and volatility goes up, um, capturing that two percent or three percent is pretty darn good um, if you're in volatility as a day trade. Uh, would I hold TVIX to the next day? You certainly could, um, I think, but. You know, this is again one thing to be cautious about. Looking at four slash CL, uh, tracking crude oil futures, a very interesting pattern has emerged. On the 180 day chart, we see that it's been making a higher high, right? Denoted by this um, resistance line. You guys can see that this horse or the diagonal resistance line. This acted as a previous support, the higher low, and now. It's a higher high, but what happened today? Well, partially, you know, at the one day, one minute area, we got a big jolt from the um, crude oil, oil, sorry, inventories report, right, that came out. And this jolt was nice because it pulled us over the resistance, but at the same time, look how we stabilized at the resistance, right? Here, a retest of the potential new support. We may see many more potential, you know, support tests in the future. But right now, looking at 180 day chart, crude oil looks like it was able to break above this resistance line on a four hour close. Remember I talked about how that was a bullish notion 
for crude oil if it can close above this line on a four hour scale. Certainly on a one day scale, you guys can see that we did close above it, but that doesn't look as definitive on the 180 day. It does look a little better. So what kind of position can you take in crude oil right now? Uh, if you weren't in it already, um, I would wait for some retest of this, um, you know, should this be the new support. I would wait for a retest. If it manages to bounce off of it a couple of times, then you could take a U position on such things like UWT or Gush, right? So here's UWT. We see that it's pretty much done the same thing. It follows four slash seal or crude oil features. And finally, we managed to close on top of that. Uh, looking at Gush, uh, this is a, a little more interesting pattern because this follows um, oil and gas exploration. Um, so it's a little different, but at the same time, you can see that we're pretty much, we, we've had this bullish run. We're now coming together, you know, in this pattern. And one way to invest is you can catch it at the 150 SMA, which is the orange line. Take a position once it gets to the orange line, know where to sell, right? Where do you guys sell? Well, right now, the best time to sell is actually around $40. Note that $40 at that point has almost all of the body, the most recent body candles under it. So what do I mean by that? Here's around $40. And if I just drag this line, so if I drag this line to the right, what do you see? Note that all the body of the candles have been under it. So you know when it gets to $40, that's the peak. You sell it, you buy it when it gets to the orange line. Um, you know, pretty pretty predictable, <laughs> I hope. So, okay, let's look at 4 slash NG or natural gas futures. Natural gas futures um, still following this higher high, higher low pattern. More recently, however, uh, I'm gonna remove this line. More recently, we do see a support at 2.892, okay. Okay, and then we see a, a resistance at 2.989. Uh, or 986. So that's the predominating trend right now. So how do you trade natural gas? Well, once it gets to the bottom around this area, you buy into UGAZ, which follows natural gas. Once it gets up here, this is where you sell near this area. That's still a pre pretty good potential for profit, right? So, so here's UGAZ. UGAZ is pretty much at its peak, right? You guys can see that how it's at the peak again. So, um, you know, this is just something to watch. It's probably going to come back down at some point, and then that's where you can take a natural gas position. But one thing you might be asking is, okay, well, UGAZ is on the top. Can I get into DGAZ right now? So here's DGAZ, and DGAZ, right, is inverse of natural gas, and we're at the support. So the thing is, you want to be careful because this is declining, right? In the near term, this is lower highs, plus it's a declining a pattern. It's almost like a bear flag pattern that's emerging right now. So if you take your position, you have to set your stop loss for this one. Um, you have to know where to set your stop loss below the support should you be wrong. Um, if you're right, then of course you can um, write it back back up here, which is, you know, still a pretty good profit potential. Uh, if you guys got in earlier today, that's still a four to five percent, you know, safely speaking, uh, a good percentage point to gain. So here's natural gas. And finally, uh, four slash GC or gold futures. Uh, gold, as you can see, did react today with the um, Fed meeting minutes that came out. You can see this plummet followed by a massive recovery or recapture of this area. So on the 180 day chart, however, you really, <laughs> really don't see much for gold either. I mean, yes, there was some volatility intraday, but at the same time, you see this resistance at 1313 and the support being 1287. Uh, it really has not moved, still going on this horizontal pattern. You can say in the near term that it's heading upwards, but you know, uh, it's just not moving that much to really interest me at this point. So looking at JNUG or JNUG, uh, here's JNUG, right? You guys can see that JNUG has been being squeezed in uh, by this like descending pattern, right? This is almost like a half a hyperbole uh, descending pattern. And then um, you see that we had a major retest, but we did manage to recapture back over the support. Uh, this is should be a pretty bullish sign for JNUG, but just the potential for profit isn't there since we're getting squeezed lower and lower and lower. So, all right. I want to take a look at which ticker. You guys know which ticker, right? Okay, let's look at Tesla. 
So uh, I think there were a couple of comments um, that I read earlier. Um, so Arshad. Okay. For Tesla, I would imagine that the breakout is false because the news of Musk needing to fire people would be a catalyst for the MMs to pull out their money. Maybe consider that before going to Tesla. Um, okay, so I agree that there are there were news that came out like yesterday, I believe, about like you know they needed to fire people. But again, this is news, and it really is um, you know the market's reaction if this is a news that you know it suddenly sparks some catalyst like you said and the and it is a catalyst for it to come down then uh, that's fine but it's just what is the market's reaction and you guys can see today's market's reaction you know yesterday sure it did fall right but really did it fall that much honestly if you bought it in at 354 you would have thought that it fell a lot but honestly it actually kept going higher right this close to this close was higher this close to this close was higher so uh, this is why when I'm talking about like trying to keep things more objective right uh, don't let the intraday ups and downs control your emotions especially if you're a longer term or swing trader uh, so the reason why this is you know important is because on the especially on the 180 day chart you can see this more clearly right we talked about potential of Tesla on the three-year chart for a breakout. You can see the bull flag pattern. And I want to remind everyone AMD, right? AMD is on a breakout trajectory. If you guys weren't able to capture this right now, Tesla is emerging as one. Doesn't mean it's going to you know, break out immediately. As a matter of fact, if you guys just, let me just remove level two. If you guys take a look at this pattern, it's a weekly candle, right? This is the open. We're closing right here, but Friday isn't here yet, so it could easily, I mean, I can't really easily come down, but it could come down uh, to around 322, forming this massive tail candle, showing that, okay, we might be potentially coming back down again. But right now, this looks very promising. We have to just, um, you know, choose or like choose our positions when the markets give us the information. The markets give us information that is objective information. The news coming in, we don't know how that's going to be interpreted. We saw that it was interpreted badly one day, but today it completely held sideways, right? And this is actually pretty bullish on the 180 day chart. Why? You guys can see this massive surge up, followed by consolidation pattern, surge up, consolidation pattern, back to the where? Back to the blue line of the 20 EMA. And there could be potentially another leg up. This boxed area noted was this gap up area. Uh, I talked about potentially testing this today. It obviously didn't test it. It got close, but didn't test this gap up area. Um, it doesn't have to test it tomorrow. It could, at which point, if it does test this area, it bounces off of it. I will be adding more shares into Tesla. Uh, but if it doesn't, then we'll see what happens, right? Um, I do agree this is something just to be a little more cautious, but this looks pretty good in terms of the breakout pattern. So are you going to put all of your shares into Tesla, 80%, 90%, 100% of your account into it? I hope not, right? How do we play these patterns? We put a percentage that's comfortable, and we'll talk more about what percentage, what that percentage is in my course, which is under development. But um, yeah, you put in a percentage that is comfortable for you, and then um, you can start averaging down, uh, you know, especially if we get down this area. So I would not put in a sp uh, like a significant portion of your um, capital into Tesla right now, as you can imagine. But if you just, you know, put your foot in the water, I think that's good. One year chart, right? We're pretty much seeing the same thing. One year chart shows we have a gap up area that we need, we need to fill. And that's pretty much it. We're holding over the support area. So. Okie doke. Let's get to your comments. Bill, Kevin, great shows. Thank you. Been following since April. Can you look at... Oh, April. That's when I first started this channel. Yeah, thank you for uh, being here this all this time. Can you take a look at LRCX? Thank you. Sure thing. LRCX. Now, is this someone that I looked at before? Yeah, we looked at this one before, right? We talked about LRCX. Actually, we did some extensive analysis on this a couple of days ago. Uh, this was the bull flag pattern that was emerging. Uh, the one thing that was to note is you can see that this bull flag pattern, they're still forming the flag. Uh, because of the magnitude of the incline, the flag might take a little longer to de develop. And we're looking at a weekly chart, a three-year weekly chart um, of the 
um, pattern. So what's happening right now, if you guys were to play this flag pattern, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, I told you that guys that the potential where I see um, good buying areas is in the box area, 169 to 184, uh, around that area, uh, because you can see how we did below, we went above, but we've dipped below, and we can, you can, and then, but th at the same time, we have a horizontal support at 185. Those two factors combined show tell me that this area is a good area to buy, okay? But you have to take that with a grain of salt and put all the information given to you into a cohesive package. And what do I mean by that? To make your best trading uh, calls. So what I mean by that is I know we're at a horizontal support, but do we have an active support area? Well, looking at this, we are finally curving back in back to the 20 EMA. So is this a support yet? It's getting to look like a support. Is this a clear confirmation of a reversal just yet, or like a reversal back up yet? It's not clear enough yet. Let's wait for it. So now you're being, you're going to be like, well, Kevin, are you going to tell me to invest when it's 190 now all of a sudden because that's the reversal? Well, all I'm saying is look at previous patterns, right? What happened when we confirmed that this was the bottom in previous cases? Double bottom. See that? Over here, a clear sign of a reversal, right? What was the clear sign? Look at the candle that was formed at the support, right? And then followed by the next few days. <clears throat> what happened here, right? Double bottom right here again. How did we know that this was not a support in, these t in this case? Well, you can see, right? It's pretty easily how we dropped below and we didn't recover and that function as resistance and hence we kept going lower. So putting all those factors together um, do you have a definitive sign? I think you're halfway there, but just be a little more patient. Um, just, you know, one thing to know is even if it curves back to the 20 EMA, kind of want to retest that support one more time. And that's when you can take that position. If it manages just to kind of arch back up, all the way back up. I mean, you know, you. so one thing is you can also get your feet wet in this one, right? Put a little bit that's you're comfortable, though this is the money that you're willing kind of to if it drops another 5%, this is money that you're like, oh, okay, that's no problem because I put a little in. I can always average down. So that's another one where you can you know, dip your feet in if you want to. Okay, Tango Tango, FDX and EW for the tickers. Thanks a lot for your insights every day. I must tell that your videos are getting addicting every day. Okay, that's good. I guess uh, getting addicting is a good thing in this case. <laughs> so I'll tackle one of the tickers and that'll be the first one that you called out, FDX. And uh, oh yeah, guys, if you are um, like messaging me or some in some way or fashion, uh, I don't really get to it, all those messages. So if you can just comment on the video below in terms of the tickers that you wanna be looked at, um, I'll look at it. I always look at the comments on the YouTube videos, but I don't necessarily look at comments elsewhere. So um, yeah, just comment below if you want a ticker to be looked at. All right, so we're looking at FedEx. FedEx, okay. Three-year chart. Hmm. Okay, so FedEx, um, looking at this chart, three-year chart, right, obviously very bullish. You can see that every time we pretty much hit the 20 EMA, we bounced off, bounced off, bounced off. Here, we dipped a little below the 20 EMA, almost to the 50 SMA, but started bouncing off. Look at the time we took to consolidate and now we're going higher. So the question is, should I start going into, into it right now? So the answer for this is, I mean, you know, this is this is something where I can ask you because I, I can see why this is a you know a hard decision. Because if you ask me to start investing in this area right now, which is where we're closed right now, I would be put in a tough decision. Look at the number of candles above three candles versus the number of candles below. Look how overstretched over the 20 EMA we are, right? So even if it goes higher like this, like let's just theoretically say that, you know, I'm you know, I'm wrong, that's not gonna come down. And, you know, it's on the upward trajectory, I agree, it goes up, right? But when are you gonna say that you're gonna take your profits at the peak, right? You could say that, but it's just, because we're so far overstretched, we don't know where to put our stop loss. If we got in right now, I would be like, you know, where's my stop loss? Is it 6% lower? This is a 4% to 6% percent 
risk uh, reward to risk, which is not something that we want. So when's the best area to get in? Well, the best area to get in is a reconfirmation of the 20 EMA. Note that we've confirmed it many times here. Sure, it can go up here, and I think it'll, it might still continue to go up a little more, but the most comfortable is when we get back to the 20 EMA and then take that position. 180 day chart, uh, right? Pretty much seeing the same thing. Look how many, how many candles were below this versus candles above. So, good call out. I like the ticker. Okay, Monica, thanks yet again for your videos. I'm watching TEAM. I see it being wedged into a bull pennant, but since it has been making record highs, this makes me nervous despite being a possible bull pennant. Okay, so let's take a look at the ticker TEAM. Okay, I see why you're saying that this is a bullish sign. Yes, so I think you, again, you answered your own question right now. Um, uh, the This is a very good observation how we are, even though we're carrying over and this has had been, been a bullish run, um, we're pretty much near the top, right? Pretty much like FedEx, where we're near the top and where can we catch it should we start falling? Well, the best way to catch it and to take that position is where we are like that slanted line up there. Imagine if you if it starts dipping, right? And you can see this bullish run started dipping, consolidated for a couple of days down here around $60. That's when you can take that position. But um, right now, I don't think so, right? Uh, because it, yes, it can, you know, it can, what, what can it do? Like it can still do this, right? Come down to the 20 EMA, retest, come up. 20 EMA retest, come up. 20 EMA retest, go back up. But to what extent are you willing to risk and get out and say, okay, I've made enough? Well, I mean, if you're willing to do 3%, you know, that's just a risk that you have to um, try to think about, right? And see if you're willing to take. But I think the best positions will be the positions on the bottom, near the low, uh, not right now, near the high. Okay, Addy Boy. Hi, Kevin. Please break it down for us. KHC. Oh, KHC, the ketchup company, right? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, lately, having higher lows, just reached the resistance at 60.12. It can go up to 62.99. What do you have to say? What should be the stop loss? All right, so KHC, higher lows. Let's take a look at KHC. Oh, wow. This company. Okay, so so there's a, there's a couple of things that's um, you know coming about right now. KHC on a three-year chart has obviously been on a downtrend, right? Note that how we came down, tested the 20 EMA rejection, tested the 20 EMA rejection, and now we formed a pretty nice you know bullish reversal candle right here. So we're coming back up. We formed some sort of double bottom down here, and now we're coming back up. So where can we go up to? Well, you know, the reasonable thing is, like you said, 3%. Was that what you said? <laughs> 62.99. Uh, 62.99. Yeah, pretty much around that area. Um, so do I see it going there? Yeah, it can certainly go there. The only thing is, uh, what you said, what? Higher lows? Lately higher lows. So um, just going off of the weekly chart, you're, if you're looking at this, I agree it is higher low, but once you take a look at three year chart, which should be more definitive than any other charts, you would see what? Well, you would see that this is clearly on the downtrend. So even if it starts reversing, I would be very cautious. Maybe, you know, start releasing some of your shares around that area. There's a potential it can get up there. I do agree. Uh, another couple of dollars, three dollars, but just be careful as we near there. Is this a play that I'm willing to take? Not really because of this declining pattern, but if you're in it, I think you're good for now. Let's just really quickly look at the 180 day chart. Yeah, so on the 180 day chart, you see how we popped above the 20 EMA, but know how we kind of get rejected at the orange line. Near the orange line, doesn't even hit the orange line, uh, and the orange line is a 150 SMA, so it might get to where it might get to $63 as the orange line starts catching a little uh, catching up a little more and that'll be that so hopefully that one helps whoa I think okay so Eric you said that the meeting minutes are coming out and that might move the market isn't that the opposite of what you say in some of your previous videos 
So in my previous videos, I talk about meeting minutes and the potential to move the market. So uh, just just know that I'm pretty sure that you know with meeting minutes coming out in every other video, I think I talked about how it could potentially move the markets. Now I won't, don't quote me on that because there might be an exception, but for the most part, I should be saying that because um, it moves commodities, it moves the markets, so it moves pretty much everything. Uh, so just look out for that. Also, can you break down CAR? So CAR, isn't that in my ticker list? I'm not sure, but let's take a look at CAR. Uh, this is Avis, right? So for Avis, and through your chart, um, right, Avis, what do, you, what do you guys think if I just gave you this chart? So if I gave you this chart and I, and, um, I showed you this pattern, you, on the near term, you might say it's an on, on an uptrend, but I would almost argue that we're coming back down. And the reason why that is, is because on the near term, look how we fell below the 20 EMA, right? Significantly, we, we did manage to catch it to the 20 EMA here. So what are we looking for? I think wait one more week. If that week we start getting rejected the 20 EMA, we will start coming down. We're in this gray zone. Gray zone, what I mean? The, what I mean is, yes, we've been making this higher high, but all of a sudden we broke down and now we're you know just barely catching up. So this is not something I would go long in. Uh, it's just too dangerous, right? It's too dangerous because it broke this pattern and all of a sudden it's coming up, but to what extent? Who knows? Who knows? You're taking a 50-50 shot saying that it's going to come back up or up here. At the same time, you're taking a 50-50 shot that it might start declining. Too risky at this point because we're at an area of a potential reversal, and therefore I would not go into it. Um, oh, yeah. Looking at the three-year chart, why was this a resistance? Well, look at that, right? Pretty much the previous resistance. Markets like previous patterns, and hence we do technical analysis. So rejection of the resistance could be on the way down. Hope that helps. Red Image Production subscribed. Thank you. Oh, yeah. If you guys do like these videos, be sure to subscribe. Uh, just to plug. Okay. Also, can you break down WTI and CRON? So I'll look at the first one. You can submit the other one uh, in the next video or this video, I guess, comments below. So here's WTI. We're looking at a three-year chart of WTI, right? Pretty much similar pattern. It's a good uptrend at the same time. Bounce at the 20 EMA. Consolidation, bounce up. The longer we consolidate, the longer the energy is given for the stock to get go up so that's something to keep in mind and look where we're coming down right now right we went so overextended over the 20 EMA and now we're coming back down where can it go down to the 20 EMA line right 20 EMA line is around five dollars 93 cents this is actually a pretty predictable pattern and hence I'm going to add this into my list I'm going to set my alert when it starts going under 592. So let me create an alert. And while this is loading, so when it's below, that's when I would think about taking a position. I actually put an alert right here as well, you guys can see. And this was why, why was this the alert? Well, this I think was the alert because this is when it could start breaking above that area. So um, yeah, fantastic pattern. Wait for the entry of the 20 EMA, and then I would certainly consider going into this one as well. Good job. Addy boy. Hi again. Oh, looks like you have another ticker. Uh, okay, this is, uh, so I think you already submitted a ticker, KHC. So yeah, if you wanted me to tackle that ticker, just be sure to comment on AGM down below, so I'll take a look at it tomorrow. So just uh, keeping it quick and fast and easy for everyone, just like one ticker per day. Um, oh, the Giants just posted a comment. <laughs> Rico, hey Kevin, I got out of Drip and just bought IQ. I was going to buy Tesla, but it's not doing anything at the moment. IQ should be a, should break to 40 next week, so it's a good play at the moment, smiley face. All right, let's just take a look at, quickly look at IQ. I think we looked at this before. Uh, why would, did you think this was a good play? You said this was a good play to break to 40. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. we talked about IQ, right? What, what did we talk about in previous videos? 
For those who watched my previous videos, what did we talk about for IQ? Hmm? Up, consolidation, back to the 20 EMA, horizontal consolidation, up, horizontal consolidation, up, horizontal consolidation, up, horizontal consolidation, up, up, horizontal consolidation. Eh? Get the pattern? Okay. So the longer we consolidate, if we if we manage to consolidate one more day back to the 20 EMA, and that could be the time to take that position to IQ. So good observation, Rico. This is a good steady pattern on the upside. Uh, yeah, what can I say about it? Good job. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Is there anything else I need to do? Oh, the last comment was uh, you saw that you saw that Tesla wasn't doing anything at the moment. Yeah, we covered Tesla, right? How if it's going horizontally, it's not necessarily a bad sign. I can almost argue that it might be a good sign. But this is just something uh, I'm actively watching. Have a small proportion uh, of uh, my capital into it. So there's Tesla. We talked about it, and I believe that is it for this video. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed it as much as I thoroughly enjoyed making it. Uh, and thank you once again for watching these videos, taking your precious time and, you know, clicking that subscribe button. No, yeah, clicking that subscribe button or just clicking that play button on YouTube and just watching these videos. And it means a lot to me as you guys uh, learn from something or, you know, help with your trading at the very least. So basically, what am I looking for tomorrow? I'm looking for SPY in the markets to continue edging a little lower well, I'm looking for a retest of the 20 EMA, right? We talked about how SPY, uh, I'm looking for that retest and seeing what happens there. But for now, it seems like we might be coming, edging down just a little bit. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Wednesday. See, I'm already lost in time. <laughs> tomorrow, Thursday uh, for another stock talk. My goodness. Uh, so I will see you guys tomorrow and happy trading.